We should talk. My Lord Hartford about the arrangements after I am dead. We are approaching the end of Henry's life. He's having to come to terms with the fact that he's dying and likely to die quite soon. During Henry VIII's reign, he at various times disinherited his daughters and declared them illegitimate. Her baby was deformed. Did you know that, Charles? So how could it have been mine? Perhaps Elizabeth isn't even mine. The presumption was that at the end of his reign, his son Edward would become king with his heirs, but the girls would not become the queen. I am sure His Majesty will one day relent. I believe with all my heart that he still loves and cares for me. Towards the end of his life, he wrote a will changing that, in which he named Edward as his successor, but without heirs on the death of Edward, that his eldest daughter, Mary, would become queen, and if she had no heirs, then Elizabeth would become queen. By act of parliament, you and I are both restored to the succession. After Edward and his heirs, of course, the king himself must have commanded this. Now, this was a, a hugely significant document and decision in the sense of, for a start, putting queens in place rather than looking always to a king. Of course, he hoped his son would have a, a son. Nevertheless, he was happy in our fifth Mary and Elizabeth became the ruler of the country. When the succession was challenged later, uh, people looked at the will and said, whether we're Catholics or Protestant, we want to be true to Henry's will. So Henry died, I think he was about 55. He was very ill, he was very overweight. He sort of sank away. Edward became king. Edward was too young to rule on his own. May I present his grace, Prince Edward. You are most welcome to His Majesty's court at this Christmas time. Your grace is very kind to speak to us in person. I have been practicing. So his uncle, Hartford, became the Lord Protector. Hartford was a very strong, convinced Protestant, and Edward had grown up with Protestant tutors. So between them, they started pushing a very, very hard, almost puritanical agenda. Henry had left it slightly in the balance, and he'd allowed certain elements of Catholicism to continue. These were rescinded by the new regime. Edward was determined uh, to continue that policy. But he got sick. It was more than a fever. He had something which totally changed his appearance. I mean, he lost his hair, his, his skin changed. It was, it was awful. It was almost as if he'd been poisoned. I mean, one could believe that he'd been poisoned. Difficult to say. Hartford was still the protector. He was really fearful that if Edward died, Mary would become queen because she was a known Catholic. So she was an enemy of his, obviously. So he tried to get someone else on the throne called Lady Jane Grey, who had a slim claim on the throne. And he actually had a coronation for her. And he hoped that England had turned now into a Protestant country and they wouldn't want a Catholic queen. He felt fairly confident that no one would rise against this. They'd welcome it. People didn't. Even Protestant people said, no, this it's illegitimate. The only legitimate heir is Mary. So poor Lady Jane Grey was executed. Hartford was executed. And Mary became queen, and she tried to reverse the Reformation. She brought back all the Catholic exiles who'd fled to France and Italy and put them in positions of power. Our old friend Cardinal Pole, who we'd seen in some early episodes, came back as the Archbishop of Canterbury. She restored the churches. She tried to force people to be Catholic. Of course, it wasn't altogether popular. As she promised to do, she burnt a lot of people, a lot of martyrs. There were some Protestant rebellions against Mary, and her sister Elizabeth was usually implicated in them. At one stage, she was put in the tower. Her death warrant was drawn up, and all Mary had to do was sign it. She didn't like Elizabeth. They had a history. When she'd been declared illegitimate, she had to serve at Elizabeth's table when she was a little girl. Welcome to Hatfield, your new home. Lady Mary, may I present you to Her Highness, the Princess Elizabeth? So personally speaking, she would probably happily have signed that death warrant, but it was her father's will, and she hesitated about signing Elizabeth's death warrant, and Elizabeth became the queen. Elizabeth came 
to power, this fraught time of, of religious dissension and difficulty, which is why she said, I do not want to make windows in men's souls. I don't want to know what your religious practice is, so long as you're loyal to me. And it was a very wonderfully tolerant attitude for a ruler at the time, and the rest is history. Man appears on earth for a little while, but of what went before this life, or what will follow, we know nothing.